if I had the pleasure of bringing out Christ, this is just how I would do it. It ain't got to be the way you do it. You might not think it's just right, but this is how I would do it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce a man who needs no introduction. His credits are too long to list. He has done the impossible time after time. He hailed out of a manger in Bethlehem, Jerusalem, by way of heaven. His mother is still headlining in the Catholic Church today. His daddy is the author of a book that has been on the bestseller list since the beginning of time. He holds the record for the world's greatest fish fry. He fed 5,000 hungry souls with two fish, five loaves of bread. He can walk on water, turn water into wine. No special effects, no camera tricks. He has a head shot on every church fan across the country. Even before the kings of comedy, he was hailed the king of all kings, ruler of the universe, alpha and omega, beginning and the end, the bright and the morning star. Some say he's the Rose of Sharon, and some say he's the Prince of Peace. Get up on your feet. Put your hands together and show your love for the second coming of the one and only. Different things the past few days. And one was real, the real Jesus, who he really is in reality, that we can't control, we can't make up. And, like, for instance, right there, uh, Steve Harvey, everything that he said, is, is it true? Can we find it in the Bible? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. So, but there's another question, because there's lots of people that say true things, but there's a difference between being able to say true things and actually loving the truth and having a relationship with the truth. But loving the truth, living the truth, and being in the truth, there's a huge difference between talking about it and, and living it. And we know that. And we know we know that. And that's that's where the difficulty. We talked about this process yesterday a lot. We talked about light and darkness at the end, someone asked a question. And um, we, we see that difficulty in our culture, we see it in ourselves, we see it around the people, and so how do we come out of that? How can we know that the real Jesus is uh, with us and changing us, and um, we can know, and he's the one who tells us. We talked about that as well, and uh, we're going to really talk about today, go from that into who we are in him, and when we are in, in, the, in the real Jesus, and how that makes us, because the real Jesus is distinguished by a lot of, re a lot of ways, and uh, a lot of scripture in your little packet that talks about who he is. But one of the bigger things is what he does to us. And he calls us to repentance, but he doesn't just call us and just say, hey, repent. Because that word call means someone's just yelling at you, hey, you should repent. No, it, it, it calls us in a way that we can't help but repent. And that word repent, you guys hear it all the time. People say it all the time, what does it mean? Well, it's really dynamic. And it's something that the, only the real Jesus has. He makes us want to call what is bad, bad, and he wants us, and he makes us call what is good, good, and he makes us want what is good, and want to run away from what is bad. Only he really does that. Because in the, without him, we mix those things up. We call what is good, bad, we call what is bad, good, we, we want you know, a little bit of both, we get all kinds of confused. He's the one who really shows us what is what, 
and, and, and has us actually love those things. Yeah. We want people to agree. We want people to like what we like. And when we meet people who like what we like, they become our friends, don't they? Usually. You, yeah, usually. Or, you know, we're like-minded, there's stuff in common, and that's awesome, and that's cool when we see that there. But the, the, we have to make the distinction because these things that we have in common, the food we like, the places we like to go, music, sports, whatever it is, those don't give us value. They help describe things that we like, but they don't you know what? They don't give us value. Our value alone comes from Jesus. It really does. He's the one who created us, He's the one who made us. He gave us meaning in our life. Our meaning doesn't come from anything else. Meaning actually doesn't come from what you do. I'm going to say that again because this is uh, a big disagreement, but um, Jesus, He says this Himself. He says, A good tree produces what? Good fruit. Good fruit. And a bad tree produces? Bad Alright, does a tree determine if they're good or bad? No. No. So what you do doesn't determine what you are. What you are determines what you do. Let me say that again. What you do doesn't determine what you are. Like a tree doesn't say, oh, I'm going to produce good fruit, therefore I'm a good tree. No. A good tree produces good fruit. What you are determines what you do. Not what you do determines what you are. That is key because that goes with everything we've been saying about who Jesus is. We have to rely on Him. We are bad. We talked about this yesterday. We are bad, but what does He do to us? He gives us His goodness. He doesn't give us His goodness by us going out and doing lots of good things and therefore we're good. And that is a big problem with when we try to tell the gospel to people, we get things in the way. We say, all right, well, you need to start reading your Bible every day, and you need to start praying, and you need to go to church, and you need to stop cussing, and you need to do all this. Those things, I mean, that's true, right? But are those things primary? Are those the most important things? No. No. Do those things make you Christian, doing those things? No. Value and meaning and life is only found in who Jesus is and not what we do. He always relies and looks to the person of Jesus and, and to his word in, in the Bible to uh, direct us and guide us. And then we always use that as a, as a standard. And he really is bold about going and loving people like Jesus loved us. That's where it comes down to, and that's where the real Jesus comes out in us. We, people can see that he's changed us if we love him like Jesus loved us. If we really have received that love of Jesus, which... A holy, awesome God who became man, who died for us, took on all the wrath because we were awful, and then accepted us um, because of his own goodness and loved us and saved us from hell. If like, we really, truly know that happened and that's a reality in our lives, we then are that for other people. We are that in the sense that we show them Jesus and we, we, we um, point to him for what he did. We point people to him. Yeah. yeah, like when you're talking about um, like your neighbors, if you're going out and you know, most Christians like live in like a Christian society and they try to stay like some of them try to like isolate no, um, isolate themselves from the outside world, like the more secular views. But whereas it says in Luke ten, like verse twenty seven, you know, love your neighbor as yourself, like he wants us to go out and like spread the word and even though, yes, they might not believe in him the way we do, we should show them the same love that we would show to maybe a friend of ours that is Christian and help them to try to come into Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely true. Here's the thing. It's not, it's not a lot.